In this video, we'll cover how the interval test works, how to apply it to your projects, and just how much faster you can make your projects run with a minimal difference in quality. This video applies to all laser types, but we'll be running the majority of the tests on a 130 watt CO2 laser. When setting the interval, we want to find a good balance between time and quality. If you set the interval setting too large, you will need more power to get the same burn, and you may see gaps between the lines, though this can be used for artistic effects. Curved edges might also show steps because fewer lines are used to produce the curve. If you set the interval too small, the burn will be deeper and darker, and curves will have better definition, but it will take more time, and at some point there's no gain by going smaller. Every type of machine and material will process differently, so this test is a quick way to improve your workflow. Start with placing a sacrificial piece of your new material in your laser bed, and set the focus of your laser. In the interval test tool in Lightburn, we can set the size of the test swatches, how many, and the minimum and maximum interval the test will run. This tool will create many swatches based on the input here. I'm going to start with a 0.1 millimeter minimum and a 0.25 millimeter maximum and five swatches. On most diode or CO2 lasers, using an interval of less than 0.1 millimeters isn't necessary. We will also need to set a power and speed value that will be used for all the swatches. Typically, you can get a good general starting point for most of your materials from your laser manufacturer. If you've already ran a speed and power test from the last video, go from that. For this example, I'm using a 130 watt CO2 laser at 20% power and 400 millimeters per second speed. We will be using simple fill for this first test. Once we have our settings input, it's always a good idea to look at the preview of the test to make sure the output matches what is expected. You can click frame to be sure your test is placed and sized appropriately for the material. Once this all looks good, click start. When running this test, I looked for an etch where I cannot see defined lines between the passes, and the passes do not look like they are overlapping. This gives both a nice background and an edge finish. Depending on the material, this interval can change considerably. Different materials often require different intervals for good results. This acrylic, wood, stamp rubber, and anodized aluminum were all etched on the same machine. We can see that with the wood, we can get away with almost twice the interval as we can with the acrylic. With materials like stamp rubber and leather, as the interval gets too wide, we end up with a fan effect. Another example of how this test can be used is to find the best interval settings for image engraving. In the interval test settings, click the dithered image button to switch the test type. When we preview this test, we see that the samples are now dithered from 0 to 100%. This will help you see what your gradients will look like in photo engraving. Click OK and frame again to be sure the test is located correctly. Then, just like the simple fill, go ahead and click Start or Send depending on your type of machine. Comparing the samples, you can see the difference between a fill and a dither, and if you will need to adjust the interval for your project. Once you have these settings figured out, it's a great idea to save them back to your material library so they can be easily accessible for later projects. We will cover the library in detail in a later video, or you can read more about it in our documentation linked below. You should now have a much better grasp on the interval test and how the interval can affect your project's efficiency and results. As always, check out our user forum linked below with any questions, and be sure to subscribe for more great videos.